What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back for another live Pokemon showdown session. Uh, this is going to be more of a, a different session, I suppose. It's only going to probably be about two parts because uh, we're doing RU Suspect, obviously, and unfortunately that test ends on June 5th, so I don't have a lot of time to record this. I don't think we're going to have time to do the normal length session, so I'm going to condense it into two parts and have it just be longer. So. Uh, each video is going to be about, I'm guessing like in between 40 and 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, depending on, you know, the length of the, the last battle, basically. Um, so that is the basic plan. This video will probably be by itself today. Uh, I'm not sure if the next one will be or not. We'll just, we'll have to wait and see how things go. But for those of you that don't know, the Are You Suspect test uh, that we are looking at here is uh, suspecting Reuniclus, which has been in the tier for a while, and then Noivern, which is a newcomer in May. So, I don't know exactly how I feel about Noivern. I haven't um, played enough RU since the drop because I was away for uh, a couple of weeks or a week and a half or whatever it was. Um, so, I was away from the game. I didn't get to use it a whole lot or see it used. So, I don't know about Noivern so much. I don't know if I want to jump on the banning Reuniclus train uh, just yet. I'm going to play with it a little bit more and see uh, where it goes. Although, this is not one of its more effective sets, it's just a, a set that I am currently enjoying using. So uh, let's go over it here. We have uh, Regenerator, obviously. Uh, well, not obviously, uh, most people like to run Magic Guard. I prefer that for Life Orb sets and Calm Mind and all that jazz, but uh, Choice Specs is the set we're using here with Future Sight, Psychic, Energy Ball for things like Gastrodon, and then Shadow Ball for Ghost types. Focus Blast obviously could be an option there to take out Dark and Steel types. But uh, I've got other things for that, namely Doug Trio here, which will handle uh, a lot of the Steel types for me. Uh, I decided to go with a Life Orb this time around, Jolly Nature, of course, to maximize our speed, take full advantage of that base 120 speed stat. Um, so yeah, it's basically there to just trap things like uh, Rhyperior and uh, Registeel, things like that. Uh, Sucker Punch, Earthquake, Memento to ease setup with other Pokemon or just get a safe switch, and uh, Stone Edge forms the nice edge quake combination with uh, the stab and that's pretty much all there is to it so uh, yeah let's move on I also needed uh, something kind of fat because as I was building this team I realized that it was mostly frail and it wasn't like a hyper off offensive team so that's not really that's not good if I don't have anything they can take hits uh, on a balanced team so I decided to throw on a Pokemon that I have not used yet this generation and that is Mega Audino now I think I have one bred in game and it's I think it's a calm mindset I have to double check on that but uh, I just never used it um, or haven't used it yet so uh, yeah we're using Mega Audino this time around and I decided to just go physically defensive because like I said I needed something to take some hits so wish protect heal bell and dazzling gleam nothing fancy there um, now we have PU the skun tank which forms a very nice core with our Reuniclus because when future sight is up we can switch in skun tank and a lot of the bulkier psychic type Pokemon that would uh, like to switch in on a potential future site get pursuit trapped and you know it, and there's a lot of cases in which that combination just forces your opponent to sack something and they have to uh, you know make a choice which Pokemon they need less. Uh, I also wanted to add Skuntank because it has Defog to remove hazards. Uh, Taunt has always been good in RU because there are quite a bit of, uh, you know, fat things that like to set up and, you know, Toxic, is Thunder Wave, Stealth Rock, all those things. So nothing uh, fancy there, although I am not running Poison Jab, so I don't know if that's going to come back to bite me if we run into like a thousand aromatis then i'll be a little bit upset but uh moving on we have our stealth rock center and physically defensive seismitoad here lefties with water absorb earth power scald and a toxic toxic is there basically just to wear down some of the bulkier pokemon because i didn't really have anything else to do that i have some hard hitting pokemon here with you know the choice specs for uniclus and everything but uh, sometimes that passive damage is just something that you need, especially on things like Alamomola. If I lose, uh, if I lose something that you know I would want to take it out with, um, I should probably make you have zero IVs in attack too, because you don't have an offensive physical move. So last but not least, we have Wandissimo, the Delphox. I feel like I've been using Delphox a lot lately, but I also feel like it's just a really versatile and fun Pokemon to use. 
So I decided to go something a little bit different this time. I normally use a Choice variant of Delphox. I've used Choice Scarf and Choice Bex. Both I think are good uh, with Switcheroo and everything. Uh, but I decided to go Calm Mind this time because I noticed I also did not have not even one set up Pokemon on my team. And with uh, a lot of the defensive Pokemon that we see in the tier, having something that can set up on them, you know, could be very, very helpful. And, and I was actually thinking about a possible substitute and Calm Mind set with like Salicberry. But I was a little hesitant to go for it. I think I might just change that, to be honest. Should I change that before we just even jump into a battle here? Uh, maybe we can. Because... The reason I didn't want to was because I felt like Rhyperior would give me trouble, but I do have Energy Ball on Reuniclus, and Rhyperior, unless it has like Swords Dance, I don't think it's one-shotting um, that anyway. And I have uh, Seismitoad, which can, you know, Scald it and Earth Power and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go for it. We're going to give it Substitute, Calm Mind, Fire Blast, and um, I guess we can give it Psychic, because that'll still allow it to hit Rhyperior pretty hard. Um... So if I need to change that for Psy Shock, I will. But we're going to experiment with that. So we're trying something new. We're being a little bit innovative, I guess. I don't know if that's innovative. People have probably used that. A lot of people have probably used that before me. But I just, I don't know, it came to mind. I've been using Salicberry a lot lately. Maybe that's why. I've been kind of on a kick when it comes to that. But, uh, all right. We're getting into our first battle here, finally, after uh, six minutes of nonsense. And this is a pretty threatening team, I'm not going to lie. Uh, that Houndoom is a problem. Houndoom, it just in general, is an issue for my team. I'm going to lead off with Delphox, assuming that... Uh, well, not assuming, but thinking that he might try to lead off with that Registeel, because a lot of people do. But he does not make that play. He's actually going to lead off with Flygon, which is kind of bad for me. Actually, that's really bad for me. I don't have any switch-ins to this. Uh, one of the weaknesses to this team is that I do not have any ground immunities, which... I mean, that's not necessarily a cardinal rule, but I usually try to make sure I have at least one ground immunity, and um, I actually did because I had Rotom Mo on this team at first, and I switched it out for something. I don't know what it was, but I, I took it off the team and then didn't put anything that had Levitate or a Flying Typing um, in its place. So, turns out that this Flygon is actually special, and that did a butt ton of damage and that did 55 this is probably gonna be a 2 KO even with the lefties I mean unless he gets like super low roll yeah he's just gonna take me out so I'm pretty sure that's specs which I have to say is awesome and I'm not even gonna be mad if this thing 6 O's me which it might <laughs> looking at my team I am super weak to ground I have one two weaknesses no immunities and no resistances either now, granted, there are not a lot of super powerful ground-type Pokemon in the tier. You have Rhyperior, but it has other weaknesses. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to go out into my Mega Audino here. And this will probably force him out into Registeel. And so I've fallen behind, so I'm going to make a prediction here, even though it's only turn two. So I'm going to predict the Registeel to want to come out, and I'm going to make the play... By switching into my own Delphox, and he does in fact uh, go for the bait there, brings out his Registeel, and now I get a free sub because this thing can't do anything to me. Uh, I really hope he tries to T-Wave, that would be like the best case scenario because he gains nothing from that. He could also try to set up rocks, um, or he might just switch out because he does not want to take a Fire Blast to the face, which I would not blame him for. So, uh, either way, I think there's there's almost no situation in which I don't get a sub up here. So, he's going to actually make the switch into his Tyrantrum, predicting a Fire-type move of some sort. So, now I could set up a Calm Mind, or I could just go straight for a Psychic. And if he's Scarfed and I Calm Mind, that's a problem. So, I'm going to have to Psychic here to get off as much damage as I can at the 75%. And so, we figure out that he is Life Orb and not Scarf. So, fair enough. That's good news for me, because that Flygon I don't think was Scarf either. I'm pretty sure that was Specs. So, I could substitute here, because he's probably... He's going to switch in Houndoom. Like, I, that's why I don't want to set up Calm Minds here, because I know that this Houndoom is going to come out, and I cannot touch it. It's immune to both my moves. But at least we got all that damage off on the 
uh, Tyrantrum. I think he should have gone into his Houndoom first. Because if he was really predicting a fire type move, I guess, you know, Houndoom was a better play. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, why did he go out into Tyrantrum? Maybe he, I mean, you still have a type advantage with Dark Pulse. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where he was going with that. But I'm going to switch in my Audino here as he decides to go for Dark Pulse. And he gets a critical hit, which is unfortunate. Because now he's going to be able to take me out with another Dark Pulse. Uh, he actually goes for Fire Blast this time. Not wanting to risk the, uh, what could have been a damage roll, maybe, because I, you know, gained the resistance with my fairy typing. I don't think that really mattered. Would have been interesting if he did miss the fire blast there. I don't think there was much that I could do, though. Like, I was basically just sacrificing it. So he's going to go for Sucker Punch as I do switch in my Doug Trio to trap him. And uh, it's going to be a double down here as I go down to my Life Orb. So... I wonder if that Sucker Punch was a damage roll. It looks like it. That could have been really bad if that Sucker Punch killed. I was expecting him to have Sucker Punch. I was not expecting it to do that much damage, though. That's crazy. Houndoom is powerful, though. He's deceptively strong. Um, but I'm going to go into my Plasma, the Reuniclus here, as he goes into his Jolteon. This thing is not going to do much to me. He might go right into his Registeel, and because of that, I'm just going to go for Future Sight. He actually stays in to go for Shadow Ball. And that does about 50%. That has to be specs because we also don't see a life orb. So I'm going to go right into my Skun Tank since I don't have Aldino anymore. And yeah, that does 13%. We get, you know, half of that back via the Black Sludge. And I can just click Pursuit here and maybe kill this Jolteon, possibly. Because I'm close to max attack and adamant. And Jolteon is not super uh, bulky. We actually get a critical hit. That may have mattered. I don't know. I have no idea how much that mattered, in fact. But uh, having Jolteon out of the way is great. And he's most likely going to go out into his Flygon here because then he gets a kill. Yeah, that's what I would do. That is what I would do indeed. Go into the Flygon. I mean, I'm going to be able to Sucker Punch that and get off some damage. And then I can finish him off with Delphox. But... Yeah, um... The Tyrantrum, I don't think, is going to be able to kill me in one hit. I don't know that Head Smash would be an Oko. Eh, actually, it might, because I'm not physically defensive. I don't have a lot of HP investment either. But I can still just Sucker Punch you, so there's really no reason. Forgot that Tyrantrum's at a low amount of HP because he switched it in earlier, so that's not a play at all. Um, he is going to go into his Flygon here. And I'm so excited that this thing is Specs, or just special in general. I don't care, even if you're just like expert belt or something I'm just I don't know I'm enjoying it I wanted to use a special one myself for a while now because the last time I used special flag I was an X and Y but now he gets boom burst and that's pretty exciting because of the sheer power of boom burst like most of the time it's more powerful even when uh, stab is considered so that's pretty cool. So he does indeed go out into his Flygon, and my only play here is to Sucker Punch this, get off as much damage as possible, and then uh, try to pull the match back with my Delphox, which I might just be able to because, yeah, looking at his team, it looks relatively possible. So uh, the Sucker Punch is actually going to do a lot. Wow, that did over 70%. Oh, that was a critical hit. That's why. That's why. That's a bit unfortunate. I don't think it really matters though because I'm pretty sure Psychic would have killed regardless afterwards and uh, I already know this thing is not Scarf so I'm not really worried about it. Now he could try to save this thing by going into Registeel but then I can just Fire Blast it and actually that would be the worst possible play he can make because then I get a free substitute up. So he's most likely just going to want to sack this thing. Hmm. Yep, I'm just going to click Psychic. There's really no reason for me not to. I could substitute in case he does want to switch, but I feel like that's just such a bad play. Oh, he's going to make the switch into Registeel. Okay. Okay, then. Um, I'm just going to substitute here. Do I really have anything to lose? I don't think I do. Try to T-wave me. I dare you. Nope, he goes for Toxic. Why? Why did you do that? I already showed you substitute earlier in the match. I don't, he must have forgot or something. Because, yeah, I definitely used it earlier, so <laughs> you had to know that that would most likely be coming. Now I'm going to get a free Calm Mind up when he either is going to Seismic Toss me to try to break the sub or switch, and he decides to switch into Flygon. 
Um, so now I could either get up another free combine or I can just psychic. And I think it's probably my it's probably a better play for me to just psychic him here because then I'm at plus one plus one behind a sub and I get a kill which means I'm going to get another kill because I don't think uh, if he even wants to go out into Glalie that doesn't outspeed me um, even after the mega evolution it wouldn't outspeed me so if he has protect for some reason that's not gonna matter but um, if he wants to try to ice shard me because you know that's the priority that Glalie would carry that I don't think is gonna break myself because it's a resisted hit so I think he just lost himself the match with that Registeel play to be honest I don't think there's anything he can do he's gonna have to hope for a couple of fire blast misses now I could just go for psychic here I don't think that'll kill at plus one especially you know when it mega evolves um, hmm I mean I would have to miss like three fire blasts so I'm just gonna go for fire blast I don't care so he's gonna go for ice shard yeah that doesn't even break the sub so I have to miss this fire blast and then two more for him to uh, have a chance at that point so it's just gonna take out the Glalie uh, if he goes into Tyrantrum that is dead I'll just kill that with a psychic because I outspeed that we already know that it's life orb so we don't have to worry about scarf and Registeel will just die to a fire blast at plus one definitely and he's just gonna forfeit knowing that uh, he you know had already lost the match at that point so we're away from the 1000 mark hooray that is great yeah I haven't played any of this suspect test yet so we're at the bottom of the ladder which might make for some interesting games I don't know sometimes I get the best games down at the bottom of the ladder and then other times I just I just don't know how I feel about life sometimes another Registeel and another Jolteon Okay, so he's actually going to lead off with Noivern. Again, I was predicting the Registeel lead, and he leads with Noivern, which is like the worst possible thing, because this thing outspeeds me and poops on my entire team. Uh, I don't have a Steel type to switch into this. Ah, oh, that is not good. And he knows I'm Salicberry, too, because he frisked it. So I don't really like that so much. Um, I could switch in Skuntank, but I'm still not going to appreciate getting hit by a Hurricane or a Draco Meteor. So, it looks like I'm going to have to sacrifice something already. That really stinks. Maybe he'll go for U-Turn. If he's like Choice or something. I'm going to switch in uh, Audrey here, as he does actually go for U-Turn. Does not show off a Life Orb, so he is most likely Choiced in some fashion. Just not sure exactly what that is yet. So he's going to make the play into his Registeel. Uh, getting up my Mega Evolution would be great here, just so that I could switch in on a Draco. But I don't really want him getting up Stealth Rocks for free. And if I predict him to go for Stealth Rocks here and switch in my Delphox, I'm going to be able to get at least one kill. Um, I mean, he'll be able to go into his Bayonet afterwards and Revenge kill me, and there's really not much I can do about that. But... I kind of want to get a kill, so we're going to go out into Delphox as he does in fact go for the Stealth Rock. We can indeed just defog those away a little bit later on because Skuntank will have some opportunities to come in here. I'm assuming I should be able to come in relatively safely on that Jolteon. It won't be able to do too much to me. Uh, even Gastrodon, you know, Earthquake or Earth Power won't do too much even though it is super effective because Skuntank uh, takes hits surprisingly well. But anyway, I'm going to... Throw up a substitute here as he pulls the switch into his Noivern, and that's fine by me. I can relatively easily just calm mind on this because I'm expecting him to want to maybe hurricane me. I mean, there's always the chance that he misses too. But if I can get up a couple of boosts, he won't be able to break my sub, and that will be extra good. He actually decides to U turn, which does not break my sub. I'm guessing he didn't want to take. Um, any damage on that Noivern if he didn't have to, but he's gonna go into Jolteon here, and this will probably still be able to break my sub with a Shadow Ball, but I'll be able to get off a lot of damage. Actually, I could just call mine again. Hmm. Do I want to just kill this with a Fire Blast? I mean, he could, like, Volt Switch into his Gastrodon too, so Psychic is tempting. I don't think he's gonna try to bring out his Registeel on this. It's probably the last thing he'll want to go into. But uh, I actually don't see an issue with just going for Calm Mind again. 
as it does break my sub and he does show off that he is life orb now if he wants to go for like volt switch or something that's fine even shadow ball won't do a whole lot at plus two special defense so i can throw up another sub here so he is going to Volt Switch that does about 27%. If I got up another Calm Mind, even his Volt Switches wouldn't be able to break my subs. So this Delphox has been putting in a lot of work. As uh, he is in fact going to go into the Gastrodon as I do get up my sub and my Salic Berry. So that means he's going to have to rely on Bayonet. Because now I outspeed his entire team. Unless that Noivern is Choice Scarf. Which it could be because um, the way he's been playing it, it is... Um, almost assuredly choice in some fashion so gastrodon takes 85 percent from that psychic that's craziness and i can just fire off another psychic here and you know not risk missing the fire blast because with my luck i would miss it you know just in case he wanted to get cheeky going into registeel but there was really no reason for me to make that play because nothing would be stopping me from just fire blasting the following turn now i could Stupid bayonets. Like, without that, I could have gotten at least one more kill here. Because I don't think Mach Punch from Hitmonlee would be able to take me out from there. And, uh, I mean, we could play around with Sucker Punches. But there's also the chance that he just has Shadow Sneak. Um, now, I could also switch out. I have a very, very safe switch into my Mega Audino. But uh, I'm just going to go for Calm Mind. He's actually just going to Shadow Sneak me. So, down goes Juan Decimo. We did get rid of Gastrodon, which is a huge issue to this team because I don't have any grass types. Those water ground types are just, they're incredibly annoying. In every tier, basically, they're just difficult to deal with, especially if you don't pack any, uh, any grass types. So I'm going to go straight into my Skun Tank here. This thing can't do much to me. I mean, what are you going to do, Willow with me? He's probably going to switch and not, because he's not going to want to take a, a dark type move, even if he is burned. Uh, actually, no, he's going to stay in and just go for Will-O-Wisp, even though I have a Mega Audino. I guess he just wants to force me to uh, use Heal Bell, but I'm just going to defog these rocks away. Wasn't really necessary for me to do that, I guess, because Delphox was gone, and the rest of my team really doesn't care about rocks too much. I don't have any Focus Sash or Sturdy users. Uh, I've got Regenerator on my Reuniclus, so he's going to set up Stealth Rocks again. I don't really know why, because he just allowed me to get a safe switch into my Dugtrio to trap him. Um, so yeah, Dugtrio is going to do his job now and eliminate this Registeel. I don't know why he went for Protect that first turn. I guess to just scout what I was going to go for. I mean, it was obvious I'm going for Earthquake. And he's going to Protect again. Okay, my friend. Okay. I don't think that's going to save you. I mean, I would have to get... How much did it do? It did 64 last time? Yeah, you are not taking this, my friend. I'm not sure what the point of that protect was. There was no way that was going to save you. Even if I got low rolled, it wasn't going to be that much. It wasn't going to be... What was that? Like 17% or something? I don't know. I don't want to try to do math. Not quite that much. Anyway... Anywho, he's most likely just going to go right back into his bayonet here and try to threaten me with a shadow sneak But if he does that I'm going straight into Audino and then I can heal bell from there To remove the burn on my skun tank so that I can sucker punch that Jolteon and the Noivern later on And it'll just be a good time. So he does indeed go into the bayonet. So into Audrey we go He decides to go for shadow sneak again He apparently is just not afraid of going for shadow sneaks Even though I have this thing Maybe it's because I didn't switch it in last time. I don't really know. But uh, like I said, we're going for Heal Bell this time. And he's going to make the switch into Hitmonlee. Even if this thing has Poison Jab, I'm not too afraid of it. If he wants to close combat me, that's fine too. Because I don't even think that's going to do half. Or maybe it'll do right around half because I am physically defensive. And Mega Audino is stupid fat. It really is. Yeah, he goes for the close combat. That does 33%. What? What just happened? Uh, he also shows off the White Herb. Okay, White Herb Hitmonlee. That is interesting. Uh, he can't kill me from there. Um, I don't think Poison Jab will kill me from there either, so I'll just go for Dazzling Gleam here to get off as much damage as I can. This should be to a KO. As he decides to go for Knock Off, does he just not know what he's doing? Or is he just clicking random things? Um, now I'm a little bit confused. Why would he do that? Did he think I was going to try to switch in like Reuniclus or something? I mean, Hitmonlee very commonly carries knockoff. Almost all of them do. 
So there was no reason for me to make that play. Um, he's got to switch into Jolteon as I get my wish back. And yeah, I don't really know what's what's going on here, but um, I can just pass this wish into Dugtrio and then trap and kill the Jolteon or sacrifice him if he has like HP grass or something. Most of them carry HP grass or ice, but uh, there's a chance that he doesn't. And I don't need Dugtrio for anything. He does actually go for T-Bolt. Why does he keep going for moves when I have Pokemon that are immune to it? That confuses me. Uh, he does have Hidden Power something. Grass, Water, Ice, one of those. But uh, Dugtrio is going to go down even from 100%, which is really sad. But Dugtrio is just so incredibly frail. It dies from a lot of, you know, neutral moves. So you can't expect it to live a super effective hit, even from a Jolteon. Uh, so... Now I have a choice, um, that could very likely be Grass, so I don't want to go into Seismitoad, even though that is kind of an option, but uh, it's looking like my best play here will be to go into my Skun Tank, and I should be able to just kill this thing with a Sucker Punch from there, to be honest. Now I could Defog, but again, looking at my team, I mean, what really cares about Stealth Rocks? Really, it's only the Delphox, and we lost poor one Decimo earlier on in the game, so... There's really no reason for me to not click Sucker Punch. It does indeed take out the Jolteon from there, um, which is good. I was kind of thinking that maybe he would survive with a little bit of HP and then die to Life Orb Recoil, but the fact that we can take him out means we don't have to take that extra damage. We get the free Black Sludge, which helps mitigate that Stealth Rock damage that we took, and he's going to go back into the Hitmonlee. And to be perfectly honest, I think Sucker Punch will kill from there, but he's just going to forfeit. So, yeah, we're going to get 46 more points, and we will look for another battle. I know we are approaching the half hour mark, but uh, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, so uh, we'll try to get maybe this one and then another one afterwards, depending on uh, the time frame, of course. So we'll give this guy a good luck, have fun. Another Bayonet. What is it with the Jolteons and the Registeels and the Bayonets? They're everywhere. They are all over the place. So he's going to lead off with the Bayonet, actually. That's fine by me. Um, if he wants to will it with me, that's fine. Uh, I just would like to get up my rocks. He does not have any way to remove the hazards. He's actually going to taunt me, but he doesn't get his Prankster that first turn when he Mega Evolves. So I do outspeed him there. But uh, I can just wear this thing down with some Earth Powers or... Uh, actually, I don't want him to get a safe switch into that Miss Magius, so I can go for Scald because there's also a chance that... It will get a burn, and he has Cotton Guard, actually. Taunt Cotton Guard. Um, does this thing have Rest? Like Rest Talk or something? He goes for Cotton Guard again, so he's at plus six defense. Uh, two Scalds in, still no burn, which is fine, but I am kind of fishing for it here. Come on! Oh, is it going to be another one of those times where I just click Scald 20 times and uh, don't get the burn? Uh, he's probably gonna rest. No, he sucker punches actually. That really did not do much at all. Wow, 20%. Uh, we finally get the burn, but he's gonna survive with 4% and he's most likely going to rest here. So, how do I want to play this? Um, I can use this to my advantage to switch out. Uh, I can toxic in case he decides to switch, but why would he want to switch? He's at 4% and I have rocks up and he has no way to remove those rocks. Rocks also don't really do a whole lot for me. I mean, yeah, none of his team is weak to it, but he could have like Focus Dash and Chino or something. He is in fact gonna rest and I'm gonna switch in my Audrey here. And we can get the Mega Evolution off if I so choose. We could see how much Dazzling Gleam does. I have a feeling that this thing is like specially defensive though based on that Sucker Punch damage. Granted, that was physically defensive Seismitoad, but uh, normally, Bayonet hits a lot harder than that, so I guess we'll see, as he's going to stay asleep. He does not have Sleep Talk, so uh, yeah, Dazzling Gleam did nothing. Wow, that did 18%. That is most likely specially defensive Bayonet, but he's also at plus 6 defense. So, um, what are his moves? He's got Cotton Guard, Sucker Punch, Taunt was the other one, and then Rest. Okay, so we've seen his entire set at this point, so we don't have to worry about will o We do not have to worry about Destiny Bond. That's a really, really weird set. It's a setup set that sets up its defense, but only has Sucker Punch. 
as an attacking move, and it only has 8 PP. So that's just uh, rather interesting. So he cannot touch uh, most of my team. I'm going to take this opportunity to switch in uh, Delphox here because we can set up a substitute and then we can Calm Mind and we should be able to pick up a kill at that point. Uh, substitute will help us dodge the Sucker Punch as well. So uh, he is going to go for the Sucker Punch there as he wakes up to no avail as we do set up the sub safely. And I can now throw up a Calm Mind. He could taunt me because it does go through substitutes. Most people don't know that. Or not most people. A lot of people don't know that taunt does go through substitutes. You don't need Infiltrator for that. But he's not going to make that play. He's going to go right into Rhyperior and allow me to set up a Calm Mind. So I get up to plus one, plus one. And now I'm just going to fire off a Psychic, which will do about 80%. Uh, 85 oh no 86 percent okay i'll take that as he sets up a sword stance that was not the play to make he predicted me to want to switch out there um but i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna sacrifice my sub and my boost just um to switch out of a rhyperior that i can take on anyway so rhyperior is gone we get to keep our sub and he's gonna go into chinchino this thing does outspeed me and he is going to be able to not only break my sub, but probably kill me afterwards with five hits from a Rock Blast. So, we need to make a switch here, even though I, you know, am still behind a sub. Seems kind of silly to waste that, but I don't want to sacrifice my Delphox when it can put in some work later on. So I'm going to go into my Audino, which, wow, that does nothing. It was doing like between four and a half and five percent per hit. I granted, Chinchino is really not that powerful, even with a life orb. But it's still, and that wasn't stabbed. But still, it surprises me how fat Audino is. Like it's disgusting. It's disgusting on either side that you invest on. It's just, it's ridiculous. It is the fattest sack of potatoes that was ever a fat sack of potatoes. That sentence did not make sense. So he's going to go into his Escavalier here because it obviously walls my uh, Fairy Stab. Kind of wish I was carrying Fire Blast on this just for this reason. Because this Escavalier would likely get to it KO'd by that. But I'm going to have to make a switch here. So I'm going to switch in Seismitoad because it resists Iron Head, which is what he was likely to go for. And we get our Wish. So we're back up to full, which is great. I would love to Toxic this thing, but unfortunately we cannot. So I will just go for a Scald and never get a burn, basically. We're going to 6-hit KO this thing, because I guarantee you I will Scald it 5 times and not get a burn. So he's going to go for Sword Stance, and so that's 1 Scald with no burn. That's 2 Scalds with no burn. He goes for Sword Stance again. Oh, he's getting greedy right now. Go for Scald again for a third time in a row. And that's not going to get a burn either. He goes for Drill Run. And that does 72%. Yikes. I mean, he's at, what, plus four? Go for Scald a fourth time and not get a burn. Jeez. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Seriously? Why do I never get a burn with Scald? It's crazy. Um, I don't know. I guess the fact that I want to get a burn is... I don't know. I don't know, let's just forget about it. I'm gonna go right into a Doug Trio here because I outspeed this thing, it does not get any priority. So I will just uh, trap it and EQ it, and that should be enough to take it out from there. 35%, I doubt you're taking a uh, Life Orb Earthquake from that range. And he will most likely go into his Bayonet after that to try to kill me off with a Sucker Punch or his Metacham if that is Choice Scarf. Which, judging by his team, I'm going to say that thing is probably Choice Scarfed. So that is what my guess is. Uh, he actually goes into Chinchino, which is Life Orbed. And this thing does not outspeed me, so I'm not sure why you went into that. Yeah, that's just dead. That was not a good play. That was not a good play at all. <laughs> uh, maybe he just miscalculated the speed tiers. I mean, it is the bottom of the ladder, so these things happen. Not much I can do about that. But uh, he's going to go into the Bayonet here. I don't know what this thing is going to want to do. Um, maybe Sucker Punch? I mean, I could Sucker Punch, but he could also Cotton Guard. And I don't like that so much. Um, it's a relatively safe switch into Skun Tank, if I wanted to do that. I could go back into my Delphox again, I suppose. Or I could just go right back into my Audino and pass a wish to something. Because his only way of attacking is... 
is Sucker Punch. Yeah, I, I don't know how I feel about this Bayonet set. It's, um, I've never seen it before. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, you don't see Cotton Guard on Bayonet too often. Isn't it an event move or something? I feel like it's an event move. But uh, he is going to go for Sucker Punch there. And so that means we get a safe switch and we burn a Sucker Punch. I don't know if I'm going to have to burn all eight of them. I hope not. Uh, he's actually going to leave, so we're not even going to have to worry about that. So another forfeit here. And we're at about 35 minutes, so we can go ahead and look for another battle. We'll probably do one more, depending on how long it goes, of course. Uh, is it going to make me wait 60 seconds, or can I... No, I'm not going to get my points. It's going to make me wait 60 seconds. I don't really want to do that. Uh, let me just get out of this without forfeiting. I'm not going to wait all, all 60 seconds. you got to be kidding me. Oh, nope. Nope, my mouse is freaking out. Don't do that. All right. We're almost through the recording. Come on, computer. Don't crap out on me now. Let's go ahead and look for one more. So, so far, I'm really liking the Delphox set. I'm happy that I changed it from just a regular Calm Mind set with Life Orb or whatever I had on it to uh, Sub Salic because it's been putting in a lot of work. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't actually gotten to take advantage of the Salic Berry, but we will see if we can get that to work. Um, still a lot of time left. So he's going to lead off with Bronzong, and he's going to be able to get up his Stealth Rocks if he wants. Uh, I notice he has a Delphox and a Scyther, though and he has no way to remove hazards which is a really bad idea so i'm going to immediately set up stealth rocks uh even if it means he sets up whatever he wants to set up i'm fine with that uh he's actually going to trick me a toxic orb so that is interesting and i'm going to make the switch right into delphox before the stealth rocks and that means i get a safe substitute here as he's actually going to set up rain dance trick stealth rock Rain Dance. I mean, I'm just gonna calm mind here. I really don't care. And he's going to set up Trick or Wow. This is taunt bait if I've ever seen it. My goodness. Trick Stealth Rock Rain Dance Trick Room, and then he makes the switch into Octillery. As uh, I do get up to plus two. Now I'm pretty sure Psychic will just kill him from there because Octillery is really not bulky at all. Um. I could get one step closer to Salic Berry range if I wanted to, because looking at his team, what do you have that's priority? You have Scyther that could potentially be carrying Quick Attack, and that looks like it's about it. But um, that'll also allow me to burn a Trick Room turn. But I don't know how much that helps me, because he's just going to be able to go right out into Scrafty, because I don't have enough substitutes to be able to burn all of the Trick Room turns. Because that was three. I only have one more substitute. So there would be one extra turn. Yeah. Um, hmm. Should I, I guess I should just psychic him here. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Because I can, just, I can still just save this Delphox. So it's, you know, not that big of a deal. So I'm just going to go for Psychic, we'll get rid of Octillery, and the rain is going to be gone. I don't understand why he had rain. I guess it's just for the Octillery, because, you know, Water Spout under Trick Room, you know. I, I guess I can see where he was going with that. Trick Room for Octillery because it's super slow, and, you know, the rain plus Water Spout and everything just dies, basically. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't get to set that up a whole lot just because it's quite difficult. Now, I have a very, very safe switch into my Audino, so I'm going to make that play. I'll sacrifice my boost. I don't care. As he goes for Rock Slide. Rock Slide Scrafty. Okay, so the Trick Room's going to wear out, and he's most likely going to want to switch here because Scrafty, you know, does not want to take Fairy-type moves. It's four times super effective. Why would you want to take that? So I'll just go for Wish as he does switch out into his own Delphox, which is uh, fair enough. Fair enough, my friend. Hmm. Let's see here. What do I want to do from here? Um. I was thinking about switching in Seismitoad, actually, but these things can carry Grass Knot, and that's what I was going over in my mind there. Um, I don't think he will go for a fire move. Or will he? I don't know. I'm going to switch in Skuntank either way. 
and he does actually go for a fire move, but it's will o so we get the wish, but we get burned. So he was going to burn a Mega Audino that could, that almost always carries Heal Bell. Fair enough, I guess. Fair enough. Maybe he predicted me to want to switch out there into Skuntank. I don't really know. And he's going to switch back out into Scrafty. I don't know what's happening right now, to be completely honest. And uh, I'm just going to throw up a wish. I mean, he could have Poison Jab, but he's going to set up a bulk up, which leads me to believe he most likely does not have that because he has Rock Slide. So bulk up Rock Slide, Drain Punch, Knock Off is most likely what the set is. Oh, no, he's got Ice Punch. So that means he can only have one stab move. Uh, is it Drain Punch or is it knockoff? He's going to set up Bulk Up again as uh, I'm going to throw up another Wish. And now we just Dazzle and Gleam and I don't know if this will kill to be honest because Scrafty's pretty bulky. And if he's Bulk Up, he is most likely specially defensive. So he's going to set up to plus 3 and it does 94%. Um, our Wish comes true, but we were already at max HP there. Um, I could throw up another Wish just to see how much damage uh, he's going to be able to do to me. I mean, he doesn't have Poison Jab. The best he can do is Drain Punch, even if he even has that. So we've seen Bulk Up, Rock Slide, Ice Punch so far. He does, in fact, have the Drain Punch. Doesn't even do half at plus three. And so we're not going to be at full health here. But uh, hopefully he doesn't crit me because that would be really bad. No, he does not. So that's good, and we're just going to kill him with a Dazzling Gleam, so Scrafty is out of the way. He's most likely going to go out into his Bronzong or his Steel. Oh, just kidding, he's actually going to forfeit, because this is the bottom of the ladder, and this is what people do. Actually, people do that uh, higher up on the ladder, too. As soon as they lose a Pokemon or two, they are gone. But, uh, yeah, so that's going to be the, the first part of the session. We'll do one more part, um, unless something changes. If I get some more time or something... Uh, and I re can record two more parts, then I'll just record two smaller parts, and uh, we'll go from there. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this part, even though it is, you know, bottom of the ladder stuff. So, uh, it's still entertaining, at least for me it is. I hope you guys enjoy it too. If you do, please make sure you're leaving a like, rating, or comments, and I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.